Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and in this video, we're going to be checking out a vehicle that will be very near and dear to those of you Overland enthusiasts out there. So, this is obviously a Toyota Land Cruiser 40 Series, or FJ40, or whatever you may call it. Now, regardless of where in the world you are... Everybody knows what these are. Everybody knows how reliable they are. Everybody knows how strong they are. And everybody knows how many wild, crazy, and ridiculous places people have taken these things. Now, just to also clarify right here at the top, there is a console-friendly version. The only difference is the badges have been removed and it has a console-friendly name. And as of the moment of recording this video, that mod, the console-friendly version of this exact same vehicle, is still in testing, but should be approved for consoles very, very soon. Now, without any further ado, let's fire it up, get it into the garage out here on Outback Overlanding, and, and then we're going to take it on some trails. It's definitely got that very old-school diesel sound. Let's see what the interior is like. Oh, this is, like, actually really, really nice. Look at the detail on the shifters, both for the, uh, both for the transmission and the transfer case. The detail on the switches. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The switches, the gauges, they, they properly work. Oh, there is so much detail in this thing. Now, in terms of customization, let's see. We get a, literally, if you want this thing to behave like a vanilla vehicle, you have a vanilla spec engine, and it's very clearly laid out for you. Then you have the 3.6 liter diesel. Then you have the 4 liter turbo diesel. We're going to do the 4 liter turbo diesel upgrade, and that's going to get us to an A-plus power-to-weight rating. Now, let's see. We've got the stock 5-speed a six-speed highway-tuned transmission, then we have a four-speed ZF automatic, and we also have a four-speed crawler kit, which is a close-ratio custom crawler box, which we're going to go ahead and try out. Now, suspension-wise, we've got the balanced, we've got the raised, and we've got the stiff suspension set. Not sure what the stiff suspension set is for, but we're definitely going to go with the raised setup. Now, tires-wise, we have these kind of like all seasony, all terrain 33s. Then we have 33 inch wild peaks, 34 inch versions of the same tires, and then up to a 35 in the Wild Peaks and also these DTS Star tires. Then in the off-road category, we've got some old school almost pizza cutter style tires in 33. Then let's see. Oh, I love how I love how on some of Iceberg's vehicles you have the option of these Cooper Discoveries either in new condition or in worn condition. And then this category will also go up to a probably a 35. I don't imagine they'll go much bigger than a 35. Yeah, thereabouts. Now let's see. Oh, those are rank locked. What? Well, I guess if I want to run those, I'll have to uh, I'll have to just dev tool them on. Really? The Swampers are rank-locked as well? Why? Oh my god, why? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, we also have these Goodyear U-Grips uh, that are fully chained if you want to take this thing on some uh, icy roads. And I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna just dev tool those tires on because I really don't understand why those are locked behind a rank wall. Now... That's not to say there's anything wrong with, you know, rank locking your tires if you want to rank lock your tires. I've got nothing against rank locking your tires if that's what you want to do. But, like, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. First of all, in this, like, dev uh, tire list, there we go. In the dev tire list, they're tricky to find. And, oh, wait a minute. There we go. Super Swamper in what I believe is the biggest size. Okay, so we got him. And then now we can go back into the garage and finish the customization process. I just don't know why you would leave some of your custom tires open and then, like, other tires locked behind a rank wall. It just seems so odd. Now, oh my god, the Autonomous Scout Winch is also locked behind a rank wall. Okay, all right. We're going to do the snorkel. And then we're also going to do, let's see, do we need the hood protectors? Oh, we might as well do it. Mud flaps, don't need those. Ditch lights, we will do. Um, let's see, do we want the pods or do we want just the big bar? I'm going to do the big bar. And then let's see, extended fender flares. Eh, I don't really think we need that. I'm not really, like, feeling those. Like, they look fine. I just don't think we need them. Now, let's see. Ooh, plain lights or tinted lights. I'm going to leave the plain ones, but the tinted ones are a really cool option. And then let's see. Rear bumper, tire, and cooler carrier. Definitely going to do that. 
And then, let's see. We'll throw the... Hmm... Oh, we got a fire extinguisher we can put on there? That's sick. We'll do the extra fuel. We'll do... Oh, there's a lot of stuff you can... You know what? I didn't want to do the roof rack at first, but I think considering how many extra things you can put up, like, up top, we probably should. So let's see. Stickers, not gonna worry about that. And then now, yeah, all right. We've got our traction boards. We got the large supplies. You can replace your fuel with the deers and stuff if you really want to, but I don't think we're going to do that. High lift jack. Uh, tent, we're not going to do that right now. Uh, flat webbing toe sling. Oh, right there on the hood. Oh, that's cool. And then let's see. Spare wheel as well. And then let's see. We got an ARB front bumper we can run. Pre-runner style front bumper. I'm going to do the pre-runner style because I like how compact it is. And then pro steel wheels and pro... Oh, black painted steel wheels. We'll just do these. I think they have a little bit more character to them. Whoa, look at that. 4x4 off-road express club. What? Oh, that's pretty sick, actually. That's actually really, really cool. Now, you can run these... Um, Actually, I was going back and forth, and I was like, I was originally going to say that you can run whichever variety of these colors that you would like, whether they're single-tone or two-tone. But, like, not only do you have the single-tone and two-tone variants of the colors, you have a nearly endless variety and selection. That's really, really nice. Like, the fact that you have this much selection, mad props to the creator of this rig. I mean, like, that's a lot of time to spend doing all of these, like, uh, like all these different color options. That's really, really nice um, that they went out of their way to do that. All right, let's go ahead and find a color that's, like, somewhat similar to the base one. Because I like the base one a lot. And I feel like this color right here, this base color, is very, 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 it's, it's like synonymous with the, um, FJ40, right? It's very FJ40-esque. Like, a lot of them came in this color. All right, so let's go ahead and be on our way out, and I know the exact trail we're gonna head to. Now, this close ratio crawler box is not gonna win you any drag races, but you don't really need it to. This is not for going fast on the road, and frankly, it's not for going fast anywhere. This is full throttle, in max gear with the crawler box. So you're not going to be winning any land speed championships with it. That's for sure. All right. Pulling up to the trailhead. It's going to put in low plus. Throw those lockers on. And up we go. Now this I am imagining is going to provide a very realistic. Almost like off-road simulation style experience. And I can already tell you that this suspension. It's pretty stiff. Like, this is going to behave a lot like a almost factory leaf spring suspension would behave in real life. Because as you can see, it's got some bounce to it. It is not going to just squish and flex like some other things. You actually have to imagine, you have to assume ahead of time that the vehicle is going to bounce on its way up the obstacles. Although for something this small and short wheelbase, it's... I hesitate to say this... But you can almost use the bouncing to your advantage to help you scramble and scurry up the rocks. It's very much a different style of driving. But you, like I said, you can kind of use it to your advantage in a way. Like, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be like, you know, crawler rig levels. But like, in terms of a simulated experience... It's pretty cool, and it brings a new dynamic to the game, and it's actually kind of fun. Like, I dig it. Although, from the inside, you're going to be bouncing around a lot. Look at that. Look how much you're bouncing around in here. Now, because this suspension setup is so dang stiff, let's see what it's like coming down this obstacle. Look at that. That's your max flex. Like, it doesn't want to flex, like, any more than that. Like, there's no more uh, up or down travel to be had. Yeah, it's definitely, and it's damped pretty stiff, too, because when you see it drop back down onto the ground, it, like, boings back up again. But it's not, like, it's not suffering on the trail because of it. Like, it's making its way down the trail. It's just very, very bouncy. It's like a, oh my god. It's like a, it's like a cardboard box with a bunch of springs in it. Whoa, easy! Easy! Not a criticism, by the way, just an observation. 
It gets down pretty well in the mud, though. These Swampers are pretty good. I've got to admit, like, I wasn't expecting much out of it in the mud, but it's definitely doing better than I thought it would. I expected kind of vanilla levels in the mud, but it's better than that for sure. It's definitely, like, more in the vein of realism than it is in, um... Well, I say realism. Let me back that up for a second. It's definitely closer to uh, standard game balance, like factory game balance, than it is to a more OP game balance. But that's kind of up to the preference of the mod creator. And I think, historically speaking anyway, that seems to be the direction Iceberg leans with their mods. So let's see if we can... Oh, Working my way to the side. Wanting to work back to the inside. Not bad. Like I said, it, while it is quite stiff suspension-wise, it's very stiffly sprung, it still manages to, like, boing its way right up everything. Like, it hasn't met anything yet that it's looked at and gone, I can't do that. Ooh. That was a pretty gnarly hit to the front end. I'm not gonna lie. That was like, I heard and felt that one. God, this little thing moves out, though. For as bouncy as it is... It's, it's super capable. It's like a little mountain goat. I'm very proud of it. All right, here you go. Find a little bit of grip on the inside. It's in a kind of a weird spot right now because it's on the rock on that one side and the other tire is in the mud and he's definitely not very happy. Okay, here's what we're going to do to try to solve this. Let's see if we can go to the left. No. What about if we... Ooh, easy. Let's see if we go even further to the left. Almost flipped it, I think. How about an alternate line? Hold on. Ooh, easy. Back it up real quick. Actually, lockers are going to be off because I'm going to put it in high. See if I can... Nope. I was like, can I use wheel speed to my advantage? It won't let me. doesn't want me to. Yeah, look, it wants it so bad. Like, we tried this hill slowly and it didn't like it. And now we're trying it quickly and it's not liking that either. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. And because we... Are you serious? Hold on. All right. Winch. Winch. Battery extended. Why you would lock that behind a rank wall when you know these are going to be used on mod maps is beyond me. I, I, you know, I'm not, I didn't originally mean to say that in any sort of like, you know, like kind of criticism type of way. But I'm like, when you know people are going to be taking these onto modded maps that they may not have the option of doing missions and tasks on... Why are you rank locking components of the vehicle that you know people are going to want to use on maps like this one? Sorry, but that's just like, again, personal opinion and preference, but sheesh. Oh, that was really realistically done, though. The line we took through there, how it kind of like S-curved around the rocks. I, I actually really like the way it was able to pull that off. All right, up you go. Come on. Oh, really? Again? Uh-oh. Yeah, this will definitely make you work for it. That's for sure. Oh, wheel speed! Okay, a little bit of an emergency winch. That's fine. And up and over. Okay. You know, I know, I know we used the winch a little bit. But I'm really not mad about it. I don't think that that was a unfair moment to use the winch. But if y'all enjoyed this video in SnowRunner, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.